Every time you search for information about this online, everybody is saying the same bullshit. All right, so inside this video, I will share with you my best tips to create a great UI and UX design. We will start with the UI. This would be the importance, the balance, and the consistency. Big equal important. This is called the visual hierarchy. By example, you have this graph. Instead of putting the title bigger than the number, this doesn't make sense because what the user want is to see the number. So you should put the number bigger and with the color more white. So this would be a gray scale and this would be white and bigger. So this makes more sense. This is called the visual hierarchy. The user need to see first what is most important for him. Next, let me give you another example. We have this application. So can you guess which one is better for the visual hierarchy? It's pretty simple. First, we have the price. The price should not be at the same level as the other information because the price is one of the most important thing when you try to purchase a house. So obviously this one is better. We have the price first. We, we have then the luxury five bed villa. We have the address, which people don't really care about. And we have the square feet, the number of bed and three bats. So this is a little bit bigger and in bold because it needs to bring more attention for the user. So this is what we call visual hierarchy. You can do the same thing if you want to sell a subscription plan or something like this. Instead of putting three different pr uh, price plan, you can put the same three different pr price plan. Oh, my English, damn it, God. All right, so instead of putting three things at the same level, you should put one that is highlighted. This would bring the user attention to this thing first. So this should be, by example, the most popular option. So this is it for the visual hierarchy, which we call important. Next, we have the balance. So we need to space things that make sense. One tip about this is the radius. If you have a cart and you have an image inside, you should not put the radius the same level. So both of them should not be 25, 25 because this doesn't look good. Instead, what you should do is the outer radius should be equal to the inner radius plus the padding. In this way, it looks visually better for the user. All right. Another tip would be if the user is currently waiting for the application to load, instead of putting a loading screen like this, that doesn't really look good. You should put a gray placeholder. So this will be the application how it will look like once it's loaded. So this is called the skimmer effect and you can build one for your application or website. It just look more professional. So we have another example, right? No, we don't have any other example. Anyway, so let's keep going. Another one is when you create a form for your application, instead of creating the form like this, item, price, description, category, blah, 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 you should create the form in a way that it will look like at the end product. For example, it will look, look, it will look like this at the end. We will have the image, the name, the price, and stuff like this. So the person, when they enter the information inside the form, they already figure out how it will look like at the end. So this is a little tip. Next, when you start with your application and the user go inside your app or your website for the first time, usually they will need to create some sort of stuff in inside the app to see something. So instead of putting just a white space, nothing inside, you have no project. It's a good opportunity to create some sort of placeholder that you say create a project with an image and stuff like this. What you could do is instead of putting an empty state, you should create some sort of template and you say create a new thing. So this is just an idea for you. You can use this because otherwise it just look empty inside the application. It doesn't look professional that much. All right. So this is for the balance, the tips I had for you. Now let's talk about the consistency. This one is pretty damn cool. So same equal same. What I mean by this is you should not have different text inside your application. You should have one sort of text, one sort of font, if I can say. So what you should create inside your app is some sort of guideline. So you have your primary color, your variant color, and all these colors. This is another example of guideline. You have all your text first, you know everything, how it will look like, and you can reuse this element inside your application or website anywhere. So this is guidelines. You need to create those inside your app. Next, we have the form. Inside the form, inside Instead of putting the CVC, by example, or the expiry date, these are two things that always goes together and that don't take that much place. So instead of putting them in two different lines, it would be better to put them like this. Okay. Just think about it when you create something. If they are linked together, try to make it look like they are linked together. All right. Same thing for the country and the zip code. Next, I have two little websites to show you that you can use in order to make your UI design even better. One is called the real time color. I'm sure there is other websites 
website. So it doesn't matter which one you use, but you can use a website that looks like this. So you can define your primary color. You can define everything and see how your application will look like at the end. Does the thing look visually great? This is pretty much all your guideline. You can put them inside the website and try to see how your guideline works and if it looks great. Another one I want to show you is the color contrast checker. So when you have a cart and you have a text over the cart, you need to make sure that the contrast is good enough. An example of this is inside these two pictures. You see that we have two, two types of buttons. One of them have the text in black and the other one in white. This doesn't have enough con contrast. And you can test this with some website about color contrast checker. There is many websites. You don't have to use this one. So you can see that if we have the black background and the white text, we have a really good contrast. Every test passed. But if we create, I don't know, a red and we put a blue-ish text, you see that three tests out of four are failing, all right? So you can see if your contrast is good enough for your application or, or website. So that's about it. Another thing we can talk about is the menu. When you click, by example, resource, instead of having only text, you could put some sort of icon. It just feel faster to understand for the user. They understand right away, like what is each thing. It's up to you. You don't have to do this, but I just think it look better. And now let's jump into my favorite part of, and now let's jump into my favorite part of consistency. And now another thing you can do is you can define icons for your list. For example, if you click on product or resource, instead of having just the text, of all these things, you can put an icon just in front of it so the user can understand faster what is the thing. And now let's talk about my favorite tip and it's how to define the color. What do I mean by this? I've seen on Twitter this post and this guy was saying this look mid and this look clean. But I don't think it's true. I think it's just because you use a gray that is so much damn gray that now, yes, it maybe makes sense. But even though I don't think this is true because what you should understand is the background should always be darker than the other elements. And this goes a little bit also with the importance because the most important things need to be bigger and more clear, more visually light. So that's why you want to create all your cards. So that's why you want to create all your cards lighter than the background. So, so I don't think this is true. This guy maybe is drunk or something like this, but anyway, and this goes with the dark and the light mode. So let me give you an example that I found on this website. You can see that by example, if we go inside the Q and a, the cards are wider than the background and this look good. And the same thing will apply if we change it for the dark mode, you see that the card are also lighter because the eye will go and look at the thing that bring more light to it. So because this is more light than the background, we will see this more. So this is what you have to remember. Cards go lighter. And one question you might have is what will difference a dark team to a light team? For example, if you have everything gray, kind of, where is the line to separate what is dark or what is light? This difference is if your text is white, then you are in dark, dark mode. If your text is black, then you are in light mode. Simple as that. So that's it. And yeah, so this was the garbage tips. I have already showed you this. And the real time color is the website I have shown you also. So that's great for this part. Now let's talk about the UX. Now, now for the UX, I need to show you two things, simplicity and feedback. Let's start with feedback. So you can build your application or website with the Gutenberg principle. What it says is your user will scan the application or the website as fast as possible to understand how it works. And they will scan it like this with a Z pattern, all right? In this way, you're able to pretty much understand everything that is going on inside a website. So that's why we are doing this. And you should put your call to actions at these specific spots. So these should be the place where you put the most important action for the user, all right? If you are inside a mobile application, you should remember that with the thumb, there is some place that are harder than other to reach. So you should maybe place your stuff inside the spot number three, click those things. One example is if you have a login page, instead of putting the sign in button at the top, which is really hard to access, you should put it at the bottom with the sign up, something like this. Next, we have the always have a city, always have a call to action. And I will explain you later why, but you should always have a call to action because if you have no buttons and no goal for this page, it doesn't serve any purpose. And this is a good segue for the last tips inside the UX, simplicity. So your goal is to bring the user from one place to another, because when your user go to your website or application, they have a problem and they want the problem to be fixed as fast as possible and as simple as possible. So this is what we call a user flow. This is what will happen when the user go to your website 
and finish the entire process. For example, they want to purchase a pair of shoes or anything. They will start, they will go to the home page, they will browse, they will go inside the product detail page, add it to the cart, view the cart, check out, order confirmation, and that's the end. The problem was they need a pair of shoes. The solution is they have the pair of shoes at the end. And also, once you have created the user flow, what you can do is you can create the pages for this user flow. For example, the home page, the product detail page, and the checkout. And also, don't try to reinvent the entire wheel because the user is already accustomed to something. They have already visited some website or application. And if you create something that is too different, they will be confused. And you don't want this. You want the process to be as simple as possible so you can take what is already in place and just make it simpler and better. So that's it.